Do you think time travel will ever be possible? Not into the past. So into the future, yes. There's a calculation in, in one of my books with Jeff where you, we, we work out, if, so if you travel at 99.9999999, that's eight nines, percent the speed of light to Andromeda, which is two and a half million light years away, and then turn around and come back again, then for you on the rocket, 100 years will have passed in, on the round trip journey, but five million years will have passed on Earth. So, so by traveling fast relative to people who are stationary, uh, you, your clock you the runs future. slow relative to theirs. So you can travel into the future arbitrarily far into someone else's future. So Mars is the only place beyond Earth that we could feasibly ever go planet because Mercury is way too hot. Venus is horrendously hot and 90 atmospheres pressure and sulfuric acid rain, it melts lead on the surface, right? So you're not going there. <laughs> and the rest of them are made of gas. So you're not going there either. We could imagine perhaps going to some of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn in, in the far future, that's much more difficult. So to Elon Musk, for it, let's mention the other rocket, rocket engineer. Um, so he wants to go to Mars, um, might well get to Mars. Um, that's the only other planet you could go to, actually, in our solar system. <laughs> Earth is the best planet. <laughs> And that's true. It's the only place where meaning exists, potentially, in a galaxy of 400 billion suns. So that would be your favourite planet. It's possible that we're the only civilization in the Milky Way galaxy at the moment. Right? It's, it's worth considering that might be the case. And there are reasons we can go into about why that may be the case. So if it's true, imagine it's true, I think that if we're talking about the meaning, meaning of it all, well, meaning is a property of intelligence, I think. So clearly the universe means something to us. So meaning exists here. But if there's no other intelligence out there in our galaxy and we destroy ourselves, then we might eliminate meaning in a galaxy of 400 billion stars forever. That's what we might do. So consider that. <laughs> world leaders that's the, you you have potentially a galactic size responsibility wow. to maintain meaning in a galaxy Basically. not every star becomes a black hole at the end of its life no because if something like the sun um, small star it's quite small yeah and, and when it collapses there's a, a, a sort of a pressure a force if you like which is caused by the fact that electrons don't like to be very close to each other. So it's called the Pauli exclusion principle. And so that creates what's called a white dwarf star. So, so you can have a blob of matter. They're about the size of the Earth, but they're about the mass of the Sun. And uh, so that's, that's for smaller stars. They end up as these white dwarf things. Another version, which is called a neutron star, which is the same thing, but for neutrons. And they, they move faster and faster, so they sort of crush into protons and turn into neutrons, and the whole thing starts again. And so a neutron star can be about, what, 10 miles across? It's got a fancy name, it's called neutron degeneracy pressure, but that's what it is. But if you go even bigger, then even that can't hold it up. I've got some questions. So if the universe is eternal, and it might be, it might not have had a beginning, if it's eternal, what place is there for a creator? You know, that's that's a good question. Right. They didn't they didn't have an answer, of course, right? An eternal but, creator. But yeah, but I, I think that these it might be eternal, right. and we might discover that. So we don't, we don't know at the moment, but we might. So I think my point is that these other human uh, designs. It's very natural to religions, a natural thing, right? People you see it all across the world in all different cultures. But I think that in the 21st century, it, religion needs to operate within that framework. If it's, going, if it's going to operate, there are still great mysteries and it is appropriate to think about what it means to be human and I've given you my view of what it means. But, but it, I don't think the problem comes when, you, when your, your theology or your philosophy forces you to deny some facts, some measurement. Now, these things are measurements. We, we, we're not saying, it's not my opinion the universe is 13.8 billion years old. We measured it. It's like having an opinion between the distance from LA to New York. 
No, you can't have an opinion on that. Right. <laughs> we know what it is. <laughs> and it's the same, right. you know. It's like, you know, that these things, you know, that people say the earth's flat or whatever. That so it isn't, and we've measured it. So it's just stop it. You know, so but that doesn't mean you can't be spiritual and you can't be religious. I would say it doesn't mean you can't believe in God or gods or that's not ruled out. Can you please explain for us as succinctly as possible the rules of quantum mechanics? Well, the most basic version I know of is, is Feynman's version, which uh, essentially says particles are particles and they hop from place to place with a particular probability. And the probability that a particle that's at some place will be at some different place later is given by a very simple rule. Um, it uses a quantity called the action, which is to do with the mass of the particle and the time and the distance. Uh, and, and you, So you basically calculate these little uh, quantities, which are to do with something called the action, and you add them up. So if I, if I start with an electron in one corner of the room and I say, what's the probability at some time later it'll be somewhere else? Then at every point in the room, you can assign a probability that it will be there at a later point with one simple rule, and that's it. Now this is called the path integral formulation of quantum mechanics. That underlies everything else. You can, you can get the rest from that. So it's a simple rule. It says, what's the probability a particle will move from A to B? That's it.